the flamingo. The flamingo suffers from an unfair stigma, and that's because other openings with zoological names have proven untrustworthy, and some of them have even bitten back. But that's not the flamingo's fault, and you can't judge all zoological openings as if they were one monolithic sum. That's just not fair. What you need to see about the flamingo is, first of all, he's very, very beautiful. Second, he can stand on one leg for hours and hours. The man has balance. And finally, what I want you to see is like his friend the hedgehog, who is in fact a very respectable dude. The flamingo is more of a setup, a lifestyle, than an opening. And I'm here to introduce you to him. The flamingo is the easiest opening to learn. We're going to put our night out, and really, it's going to always be the same thing. He's going to put his night out to F3. Maybe he'll go knight C3. Maybe he'll go G3. And all of these moves, what we're going to do is we're going to put our bishop here, and no matter what happens, we're going to play d6 and e5. And after that, all of our pieces are going to have nice squares. We're basically going to turn this bishop into our good bishop by putting our pawns on these dark squares here. Our knight is usually going to find this square. All of our pieces are going to have harmonious development, and that's really all an opening needs. So I'm going to blah blah on a little bit more after this, but that's it. You don't actually need to know anymore. Hit subscribe and move on if you want. The easiest way to understand the flamingo is to compare it with the king's Indian. So let's start with saying a couple obvious things. First of all, the pawns are pointing towards the king's side, and that means that black will be looking to start an initiative on that side of the board where the king is. Now, a couple things I really want you to see is that black in this position has two problems. One, he's got a bad bishop. In the flamingo, we're getting rid of that thing. Two, he lacks space, and by trading that one minor, we will suffer far less in terms of space. The next thing we can see is that, of course, many different pawn structures can arise in the flamingo, just as in the king's Indian. So, for example, you might find yourself with this position, where we'll have the better pawn structure because we can control the center square and he can't. He's doing double duty on d5. You might also find yourself in this pawn structure where we will be threatening to play e4, and that will constitute the thrust of our attack onto the king. So we're going to go out and look at the flamingo in its natural habitat with some practical examples, but that is the basics in terms of the ideas of what you need to understand. So the first thing I want to do is admit that I've made my own life much more difficult than it needed to be for decades now by creating tomes of analysis about what I should do against any given thing that white might throw at me in this position. And the thing about the flamingo is you can make it as hard as you want, but you know that the flamingo is always there for you. No matter what, the system that I've described will work really against anything. So let's look at a couple examples. All right, uh, let's start off with knight c3. Now, for most players, this is called the Nimzo Indian. But for us, if we're playing the flamingo, we're just doing the flamingo. Let's say f3, just as an example, a very ambitious setup, right? So let's put the knight there. Let's put the pawn there. Could we have played d6 first and then e5? Absolutely. Let's say d5, snip, and knight a5, and we're going to attack the pawn very simply with moves like pawn, pawn, and bishop. Could you have done it otherwise? Could you have moved the knight to e7? Could you have left the bishop on b4? Absolutely. Let's look at another example. Uh, queen c2 is something you'll see, and a lot of times white will be so just keen to win your bishop. And honestly, we're fine 
with trading the guy off. That's part of our plan. But let's look at how this will go. You'll definitely have this uh, in your own games. Now, by the way, this is an important, there's one tactical trick you should know. You want to make sure you don't get nailed with queen a4. And in this position, it doesn't work because you can simply take the pawn on d5. However, please do not lose your bishop on b4. Just something to be aware of. So let's look. Uh, a standard way that this might go would be like this. And what do we do? We're just going to push. And if he pushes us, we could be weird and play knight d8. It's possible. But let's just play knight b8. Put your pawn out there so your rook is active. Bring your bishop out. Now look, this is an important difference with the king's Indian. In the king's Indian, the, your good bishop, your light square bishop, can't come back. And here you can. So you have that option. It makes development much easier. For example, like this. Fine, beautiful position. Nothing to worry about. Let's look at another one. Knight f3 is another one you'll face. And this could also of course, come to pass if after knight f3, it goes bishop b4 and they play knight c3, right? Totally possible. So here we go, knight f3, let's say d6. Again, queen a4 isn't going to work. e3, this is very common. You'll see this a lot. Castles, bishop d3, and you could play e5 and all this other, I mean, knight c6 as well. But here's just a nice example, e5, and... Again, with this pawn structure, we're going to make white worry about the e4 push. And this is just nice if he takes because we have beautiful compensation like this. And I would say we're better in this position. Well, it's probably more like equal, but I like it a lot because our development is fantastic. And it will be very difficult for white to hold on to the c4 pawn. All right, let me show another example g3. This could happen, for example, if they play g3 on move 3. If they play, for example, here. This is very popular. And with bishop b4, it will be very similar to what we're talking about here with knight c3. So, um, excuse me, uh, g3, let's say d6, knight c6, castles, snip, you could have waited, but actually, I want to. I want to point out, you you want to be a little careful that the bishop doesn't get hung out to dry. So, for example, once he castles, you want to be wary about the question of whether he's going to be able to like move the knight out of the way and then hit you with something like f a three. And one of the nice things here is that we now have a long term structural weakness to work against. And we have our flamingo right there. Beautiful structure. And the most important thing, I really want to emphasize this about any opening, is just that all of your pieces look good and are harmonious. Good bishop on c8, perfectly placed knights here. The queen will probably move to e7, but we're flexible on that account. All right, so maybe you're asking, well, what about the dreaded knight f3. Now, again, you can make this as hard as you want and study tomes of theory with b6, the queen's Indian. Totally possible. But what I want to share with you today is that you always have this option to give a check. And here, white has a big choice, bishop d2 or knight d2. The bishop lovers that you face will play knight d2 trying to win your bishop. Well, let's take a look. What if we just played the flamingo? Will it work out? Yeah, it's going to work out. Now, by the way, you again, you want it, this is an example where you don't want to let the bishop get hung out to dry with something like this. And then the bishop's in trouble. So anytime he castles, that's your signal that you want to think about what's going to happen with your bishop. So we take it. We play e5. We have our flamingo. All our pieces are in great spots. All right, the people who are not bishop lovers after bishop b4, we'll play bishop d2. This opening is sometimes called the Bogo Indian, but for us, it's the flamingo, because we are simply going to play the same setup. Let's say queen e7. Other moves are possible. I just like to develop. g3, knight c6. And the point here is that after a move like bishop g2, what we'll do is we'll take the thing, and it's a little bit awkward for white. For example, queen takes and knight e4, and then we're going to have this problem for him. 
And also on knight takes, which is probably what you'll see the most of, d6, e4, e5, d5, for example, knight b8. And really, I want to stress, this is a beautiful king's Indian because you've gotten rid of the bishop. And something that's important for all chess positions is that uh, when you have less space, as black does here, it's very nice to exchange off one or more pieces to lessen the congestion. And that's one of the key ideas of the flamingo. Now, finally, let me sum up by saying this. First of all, the flamingo is not a pet. Do not try to treat it as a pet opening. That would be disrespectful. Second of all, you might ask yourself, well, what if the guy does something like the London? Or what if the guy is disrespectful and plays a3 against me? Well, my friends, then you can resign and just start again because there's nothing I have against those openings. But I do hope you've enjoyed the flamingo. Bye-bye.